Welcome back guys, it's Dr. Somji. Today we're going to be talking not about skin, we're going to be talking about hair. So as a lot of you know, a big part of my practice is hair restoration. I perform hair transplants as well as seeing patients for non-surgical hair restoration as well. So one of the things that was popped up on my feed and actually was a really popular video on my TikTok page was about this product. The Ordinary Multipeptide Serum for Hair Density. You see it everywhere and you see actually both things that are almost like Marmite. So it's can either people love it or people don't really like it at all. So we're gonna look through the ingredients and I'm gonna tell you whether it's actually worth using or not. Or, and if it's not worth using, what might be better? Or when you should use it and how you should use it as well. So stay tuned. So, um, if we look at on label, we'll be able to see what's, what the actual ingredients is about. So it says multi-peptide serum for hair density, a concentrated serum for hair that looks thicker, denser, fuller and healthier. So immediately, this product is not approved for hair loss. So if you've got like me, male pattern hair loss, um, and you're on like medication, so for example, I'm on finasteride, so one milligram, which helps with male pattern hair loss, as well as topical minoxidil. And when my hair was like completely bored, after that, I had a hair transplant and I'm, ever since, I've been holding on to my hair. If you're on medication for it, for hair loss, I would always continue that because this product is not approved for hair loss. It's just giving you more thicker, denser hair. So you might want to use it as an add-on and that's the most important thing that you need to remember when you're looking at this product. So here we are. Let's look at the ingredients. So the ingredients are not on this label, so I've written them down. So the first ingredient that's there in the product is caffeine. So caffeine you might find on things like shampoo. So Alpacin in the UK is really, really popular. It's got it's a caffeine-based shampoo that is almost like a mild stimulant for the scalp. So maybe improves the blood flow slightly and can help with maybe the hair becoming a little bit more healthier. So I'm gonna help hair loss, but it's gonna help your hair being, maybe help your hair like almost feel a bit healthier. It can dry the scalp slightly, so if you've got dry scalp initially, this can make it a little bit worse. So you have to be cautious with this product. You've also got um, a few root extracts. So you've got Scutellaria root extract, which is very well known for being an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, as well as an antifungal. So if you've also got sensitive scalp, um, then this might help you out because there's a few things in here that can help it help it out. You've got um, Camellia sin sinensis leaf extract. I can never pronounce these root extracts names. But the key product with there is catechins, okay? And these catechins can also stimulate a little bit more hair growth. So they may actually prevent things from breaking down. That's one thing. So if you're losing hair, it may reduce the amount of hair loss that you've got. If you've got something called telogen effluvium, which is shock loss and you're shedding hair, this may help slow down that process. But still, there's nothing here so far within the ingredients and what I'm reading online in the ingredients. There's nothing there that was actually uh, clinically proven for for male and female pattern hair loss, so genetic hair loss that you get. The next ingredient um, is biotin oil tripeptide. So this is a peptide that's based on essentially biotin. Now we know biotin as being extremely popular as a tablet form uh, for hair loss and for thicker looking hair, healthy skin, healthy nails. Um, now, not everyone responds very well to biotin because ever since I started doing DNA tests for skin and hair in my clinic, I noted that there's a lot of individuals that don't have the enzyme that, that can help you get the benefits from biotin. So it's always, uh, it's always a kind of hit and miss with biotin. Sometimes it really helps individuals and sometimes it doesn't. So, but this again, can help with healthier, fuller looking hair. And again, nothing with hair loss so far. Then you've got acetyl um, tetrapeptide, which uh, stimulates something called an extracellular matrix. So the extracellular matrix is what is in between all your cells. So it actually helps with the environment in your scalp. So it reduces sensitivity, it helps with the environment so that maybe hair can grow a little bit more fuller. So if you've got kind of split ends, you've got hairs not lacking that bit of luster, then acetyl tetrapeptide can help with that, uh, almost like the soil for where plants can grow. And this is what it does. So it's improving the environment for hair anchoring. As you come down lower in the inky list, you can things like, like lactic acid and gluconolactone, which are mild exfoliants. So if you've got a little bit of dry scalp, maybe some seborrheic dermatitis, this would help shed that dry scalp so you get less dandruff within that area. 
Um, and then you've got some soothing ingredients as well. So, you know, the Scutellaria root extract that we talked about is great and nice and soothing. The Camellia ex leaf extract is also soothing as well. But what they market is something called Redensil, which um, is part of what we talked about. Uh, but if you look on online um, and you don't look at the inky list, so I looked at the ingredient list and I said, look, this is what everything is. Uh, what the ordinary say is um, the technologies present in this formula, including Redensil, so the wood extract as well as the camellia extract, as well as the peptide extract, um, help um, with hair loss. So uh, they say it makes it look thicker, denser and fuller. But what you need to remember is that none of these things are great for male and female pattern hair loss. So can you use this product instead of minoxidil and get as good results? The answer is actually no, if you've got male pa pattern hair loss like me or female pattern hair loss. It should be used as an adjunct, which basically means that you might want to use the minoxidil or regain whatever you use during the daytime and then use this hair product maybe during the nighttime, for instance, or vice versa. So it's not a replacement. Uh, it maybe mildly blocks some forms of um, hair loss, maybe things like uh, damage to hair, um, shock loss called telogen effluvium, which may be either emotional, uh, emotionally driven or even driven by changes within your biochemistry, i.e. blood tests. Um, but it's really just there to thicken hair. So this is not a hair loss product. And I see a lot of people with clear male pattern and female pattern hair loss trying this product and saying it doesn't work. Well, the fact is the ordinary never said that it worked for hair loss. It's just if you have hair and it's a little bit damaged and you want to improve the health of your hair as well as the health of your scalp, this is gonna help you out. Now, also what I see a lot of online um, is people using this and actually getting sensitivity and irritation on the scalp. And when I was trying this for seven days, my scalp is seriously sensitive. And I used it in conjunction with minoxidil. So I used minoxidil in the morning and this at night. My scalp flared up and I looked at the ingredients and there's two things in there that would cause that. Polysorbate 20 as well as castor oil. So people use castor oil a lot for hair loss, but it actually irritates the scalp a lot as well. So it, this contains this. Um, so if, you're, if you've got sensitive scalp, I would actually stay away from this product. But if you've just got hair that maybe you've heat treated too much, you've got split ends, could look a little bit healthier, fuller, and you don't have male and female pattern hair loss, then this product is good. If you've got male, male and female pattern hair loss, i.e. like yours truly, then stick to what you're using that's FDA approved for hair loss and you can use it as an add-on just to improve the health of your hair. And that's how you should be using this product. So that's it. Um, I think it's got some decent ingredients in there. Nothing really too strong. I would probably not use this myself because for me, um, minoxidil and my one tablet a day, finasteride, stop my hair from going further back. I know that if I, if, I, if I need more thickness, I need another transplant because I have no follicles there left. But there are also some other things that you can use on the hair, such as rosemary oil, which is, more, which is actually proven for male and female fat and hair loss over this. So although it's really popular and it's always sold out, um, I wouldn't be using it. So if someone wants this product from me, just let me know. So don't forget to click the link to subscribe. Uh, click the bell as well, because you'll be alerted about all new content. If you've got any more questions for me, just let me know in the comments below. We put a few details there about the key points within this video, so you can scroll back to them as well. Thank you so much.